Today we've been telling you how brood 10 cicadas will start to die off in the coming days. Long story short, they've reached their peak of their mating season, so they will start dying off now. Dr. Gene Kritsky, a cicada expert at Mount St. Joseph University, says he expects their rain to be over around July 1st. With the cicadas dying off in mass, a huge surge of nutrients comes with this for our local ecosystems, and that is where a professor at Miami University comes in. He's tracing the bugs effects on our ponds and streams. We're getting some really good science lessons out of all this. Dr. Michael Vanny joins us via Skype. And Dr. Vanny, let's uh, start with just give us what your research is about and, and how uh, Brew 10 is gonna help us. Yeah, well, thanks for inviting me. Um, so our research looks at how the cicadas after they die and, and drop to the ground um, actually how they affect pond ecosystems. So, you know, a lot of them are falling on your sidewalks in your yard and annoying you, but some of them fall into the soil and some fall into streams or ponds where they actually uh, enrich the ecosystem. So we're doing an experiment uh, simulating small ponds where we're actually adding cicadas to some <clears throat> and um, keeping some as cicada free. Uh, we're also warming some of the ponds um, because we, ex well, don't, not that we expect, pond temperatures and lake temperatures are warming because of climate change. So we're looking to see how in the future, when these ponds are even warmer, whether the cicada effects will differ. So it's looking at both the cicada inputs as well as um, warming temperatures. So let's talk about why this is important to, first of all, to mm -hmm. study our ecosystem and, and do our ponds need these nutrients? Are we in trouble right now? Do the fish have enough? Um, well, a lot of our lakes have plenty of nutrients and that's why they have too much algae. But you know, in, in wooded areas where there's small ponds, um, they might be temporary ponds that, <clears throat> that only have water a few months. Um, those typically are low nutrients. So this is a boost in nutrients. Of course, it only happens every 17 years. But we've estimated that um, about the same amount of nutrients, nitrogen, phosphorus, carbon, um, fall from the cicadas into the ponds as as does uh, enter them from leaf fall in the in the autumn. So it's a, it's a substantial amount, and some of the effects will be short term, like on algae. But this year we're looking at how the these effects might affect um, the tadpoles of frogs, and then of course if if they affect the tadpoles, then it might affect frogs um, even when they're adults and maybe for several years down the road. But we'll see if that happens. So we could see more frogs and bigger ones? <laughs> maybe. Okay. Um, we'll let you know in about, about six weeks if that happens. Okay, we got about 20 <laughs> seconds. What do you hope comes out of your research and do you have a prediction as to what happens in the coming months and years because of so many cicadas dropping into our waterways? Well, I think, I, again, I think a lot of the effects will be short term, we'll get maybe a small algal bloom, but we might see these uh, prolonged effects and, and that would be really interesting. And then they could go, you know, because the frogs will return next year to breed or several years later to breed, then they could be uh, ongoing. So, um, and, and it's also a great way to teach students uh, about ecology and about how to do science. So that's a big part of our work. It's a, it's a great time to be a student of this sort of thing. Our meteorologist, Sherry Hughes, says she planted some in her garden. Is that going to help her plants? I think it will, yes. Okay, very good. Sherry always Natural knows. Natural Very good. Can't hurt, right? Dr. Michael right. Vanny, a professor at Miami University, thank you for talking about your research with us. And please do keep us posted. We want to know. Uh, what comes out of this. Good for you.